Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, news, lifestyle, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Perm Otis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. You'll recognize my guest from a show that just got released on Netflix. You might have heard of it. It's called Cobra Kai Season 3, now available on Netflix. We're speaking to Barrett Carnahan and Jesse Cove. Barrett, Jesse, welcome to Pop Turnative, guys. What's up, Bruce? Yeah. Whoa. David? How's your uh, jaw? It's fine. How's your lip? That's good. Good. Betsy's way better, though. Yeah. Tell her I said hi. Yeah. Figured you ought to know that. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Barrett, thank you so much for doing this. Jesse, long time no see, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I wish I could have told you more last time, dude. I know it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I mean, where do we begin? Like, <laughs> this opportunity to interview you guys came, and it's just like, where do you begin? I mean, um, first of all, both of you, phenomenal job. Um, such a good season. I mean, I wanted to go in Barrett as much as like as fresh as I could, right? So I didn't really know about a lot of like that there was going to be a backstory about Crease in Vietnam. You know what I mean? And I thought like it was just kind of a cool dynamic to Cobra Kai. So, I mean, first question for you, I mean, what was that whole kind of experience like getting to kind of play such an iconic character that we know from the Karate Kid films? Oh man, it was, it was overwhelming. It, it really, really was. When I first auditioned, actually, uh, the sides were, uh, a little bit different, but the, the character's name was Jared. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it wasn't until I had my callback, uh, when after I'd kind of like uh, really given the cast and directors a hard time. I uh, said, okay, what's going on here? Because in these sides, you know, this, this character is going off to war. He's working in a diner. He doesn't have scenes with anybody. I was like, these aren't faulty sides, right? And they were like, no. I was like, okay. And she was like, it's young Crease. And I was like, oh, <laughs> now I know. All right, cool. Now I have a better idea of what's going on. So, I mean, it was a crazy experience. I mean, showing up and obviously, you know, getting to work with Jesse, which was awesome. And then, and then seeing Marty come in on the first day that I was working, it, uh, it, it really blew my mind. And it, as, as day by day, as it went by, I got more and more nervous yeah. because I know how hardcore the fan base is and how much you guys love this character. Uh, so it was, it was overwhelming and really, really nerve wracking at times, but you know, luckily everybody kind of had faith in what I was doing and, uh, Luckily, I delivered something that fans really enjoyed. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. Amazing. And Jesse, how hard was it when I even set you up for the? I, I set you up, man, for the home run pitch, man. Being like, you never know. Maybe we can see you in Cobra Kai. You're like, yeah, I'd love to, man. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm an okay actor, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> um, I mean, one let alone being involved with a show like Cobra Kai. We talked about it, you know, when you came on before. I mean, that show is just a massive show in general. But to be part of the show is one thing. To be part of, like, the backstory of the character your father played is a pretty special special feeling, right, Jesse? Yeah, I mean, like what Barrett was saying, like, just, you know, Barrett and I, like, the first day we opened up the transport van where we had met for the first time. And I was like, oh, okay, you're playing, playing my dad. Awesome, all right. And he's like, all right, you're going to bully me. And... <laughs> It was just like so surreal. We slide open the van and like all of a sudden there's like, I mean, it was a huge day. It was a huge day. They had all these, you know, these cars from the 60s and they had this diner that was closed off for us and they had all these extras. I mean, it was a massive day. I mean, you know, and, and, and then Barrett and I go there and we, then we jump into the scenes and it was just, you know, we started riffing back and forth and we kept talking about the whole time how surreal the whole experience was. Um, you know, even the directors, John, Josh and Hayden, they were chatting with us about how they had never done a, you know, a period piece before. This is the first time they've ever done anything that was period. And it was exciting for them as well to see, you know, us up there doing what we were doing. Absolutely. Um, and it it's one of those things. I mean, you guys dupe us, right? Like everyone thinks it might be <laughs> Jesse. That's actually crazy. You know what I mean? Because everyone, yeah. <laughs> everyone literally fell for that. I and, I, and I remember when we were shooting that, I was like, I was like, they, they should buy this, right? I was like, they're, they're doing this pretty well. And like, I remember like them setting it up 
you know, really, really being about that moment. And I was like, I really hope to sell. And then when it dropped, I went on Twitter, I went on the Instagram and like everybody was duped. And like yeah. nobody knew that it was going to be the, the, the bus boy that he shoulder checked on the way in. Like, <laughs> it was great. I'm so glad that. Yeah, because you pick, you pick up the pamphlet, right? That's kind of where it all starts, right? You pick up mm-hmm. the pamphlet that you're just like, wait a second. Yeah, I mean, they threw in the obvious, like you're, you know, Jesse sits down. Yeah, no mercy. It's like. <laughs> it's, it's right. kind of like what is going on but you said jesse the whole that whole so that whole like all those scenes that was like one day's worth of shooting yeah it was one day and then we almost didn't make it because like it was really hot that day yeah. and there were thunderstorms and we had to like you know I, I guess there was i didn't even know about this but like i guess you have to wait like 30 minutes between each thunder strike to allow people to go back outside or whatever. Mm-hmm. Remember that? <laughs> we were, we were sitting out. inside just shooting the shit, having a good time in this diner while it's raining outside. And then it starts to clear up and we're like, okay, good. We'll go back to work soon. And then, <laughs> damn it, there's another 30 minutes. It was. It went on for, wouldn't you say, like four or five it hours. hours? It was hours. Barrett and I were literally fighting each other outside. We just wanted to keep kicking the, the shit out of each other. We were having such a good time doing that. And... Uh, it was just like every time this this thunderstrike thing happened, we had to stop the production and go inside. And Barrett and I were like, "Oh, no, we just want to keep going at it." We were just having a blast, like you know, even doing the whole stunts and everything. It was just, it was amazing. But real quick, Pete, back to what you said about in the diner, like yeah. you know, what Barrett was so great at, which I loved, was like you know, really showing like the other side of Crease, which I'm sure you'll talk about, Barrett, but just like showing the, the a little bit more of the sensitive side of Crease that we've never ever seen before, you know. And he did such an excellent job doing that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, but I also wanted to say about it too. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, you're doing this, you're, you're, you're playing a character that people know for many years on these unbelievable like, part of this unbelievable franchise. I mean, one, the actor and the character is in the show that you're kind of playing <laughs> the young side of. And two, his son is also on the show too. I mean, no pressure, right? <laughs> With a lot. No, when I went into the makeup trailer, because I found out like the night before that I got there that it was his son that was that was playing, uh, you know, fully and playing David. And so I'm like, oh, great. Can't wait to meet this guy who, you know, I'm playing the younger version of his father. I hope he's not pissed off about that. And I'm like, I walk in, this dude pushing... 200 pounds, like 230 pounds, whatever, 6'3", dude that could crush me so easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, no, it was a, it was a great time. And Jesse was like, so excited about it. And both of us were, were so excited. Oh, absolutely. Uh, to be involved. Like, and we just kept, we would be in the middle of our fight and we were just having so much fun. Both of us had probably been doing this in our backyard since we were four years old, this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, he would just come up to me and just be like, you believe we're doing this? And I'm like, I can't believe we're doing yes. this. Yes. Like it, it was one of the it was the one of the best days of my life, hands down. That's amazing. So no, that's awesome. And I, I definitely I have a specific question that I prep for both of you specifically about Cobra Kai. Jesse, starting with you. I mean, you know, cat's out of the bag, you're in Cobra Kai, you didn't tell me right away. That's okay, I'm over it. Um <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh um it's one of those things where people that have followed you on social media, you know, you were a supporter of the show. You know what I mean? You, you posted photos about the show, photos of your dad and everything when well, you weren't yeah. on the show. Now you're on the show. What's that kind of difference been now that you were on the show, the interaction with the fans, talk a little bit about everything. Cause it's been crazy since it kind of dropped. It's been nuts. It's, it's been nuts. Bear and I were literally calling and texting each other the, the weekend that it came out. And we were laughing because I, I said to him, I was like, dude, I was like, I feel like my phone is duct taped to my hand because we were, you know, we were seeing how the reviews were coming in and the reactions, right, Barrett? I mean, we were just yeah. like, trying to see what was going on. By the end of the weekend, my eyeballs were like the temperature of fire. Like I, I was like, my, I, my eyes were just burning, like from how much they've been glued to my screen. I need to get some, some blue glass eyeglasses or whatever. But uh, yeah, no, it, it, like we were, we were so excited the entire weekend, just calling each other, texting each other, like different articles and stuff. Yeah. And they were popping up. And, and I think Jesse definitely had more of an idea how crazy this fan base is. Uh, but I was, I was not ready. I really was not ready. Well, that was, that was kind of my question because you are, you have been for people that follow Barrett Carnegie, you have been on a, 
a pretty successful Netflix show in the past that has a pretty big fan base as well. So mm -hmm. that was kind of my question. Like, I mean, were you that, were you like, how surprised were you? I mean, maybe you're used to a lot of like the social media buzz with good big shows on Netflix with your past work. But like, I guess this is like next level. This is insane. Like the fans are just like Definitely. nonstop right now. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it really has been nonstop. And, and something that has been so exciting for me is to see people, you know, see the people that, uh, that go a step beyond what's happening and goes a step like on Alexa and Katie, which was the other Netflix show that I did. Yes, it was, you know it's it's a great uh, family show. It's a sitcom, really really fun stuff. Uh, but this you know this show has a world. This show has a universe. This show has a past uh, and a future. You know that that people want to really really dive into. And the the thing that's been really really fun for me to see the people that are kind of you know having, you know, skeptical ideas about what, you know, things could mean. So it's like, I haven't, I've seen so many comments that say, Betsy isn't dead. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. The <laughs> theories, man. Dead. Betsy's alive with Kreese's child, even though that doesn't really make sense because he's in the military <laughs> for four years now and he can't have a kid. Uh, but no, somebody else is, I don't know, maybe she's paralyzed. Like My son will play that that character. Oh, Je yeah. Jesse, yeah. I, I saw, I, man, I saw a theory about you, about how you're going to be, you're related, like, your character is related to Barnes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> Which that is like, crazy. that's interesting. I'm sorry, that was, that's an interesting one. The, the universe, the, the Karate Kid Cobra Kai universe is really unbelievable. I, as well, have seen all these crazy things. Like, people think, like, you know, Tori is my, maybe my dad's daughter or his <laughs> daughter. I mean, it's like, it's really, really wild. We're um, seeing that, that Tori is uh, is uh, Betsy's daughter. Or, sorry, Tori's mom was Betsy's daughter. That's a that's a big one. <laughs> well, everyone can't be related to everyone. I mean, I the fans need to be like... <laughs> But that's what makes it so fun. But that's what you were saying, Pete, at the beginning. Like, you know, the audience, how amazing this audience is. Like, I was, I know this audience. I've been with it for a while. So I was just, I was kind of waiting. To, like, I was holding the doors and I was just waiting to open them, you know, so like to allow people to know. And I wanted to tell people too. Like, I wanted to tell you, but I just couldn't. You know, Netflix didn't want me to say anything. But, you know, I'm just so relieved that I can talk about it and be open about it and, and share Absolutely. it with Barrett. And, uh, and it's just been, it's been amazing. I think, you know, fans are all super happy about it. I think it's a cool, you know, I think the writers even knew that it was just a nice way to kind of bring that in, you know, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just been a, it's been a whirlwind, man. It's been great. Absolutely. Yeah. And just to clear the record quickly, uh, Jesse, I do forgive you. It's all good. All right. I appreciate, <laughs> it. I appreciate it. Um, Barrett, this is a show that, you know, you're, you're playing a character um, in the days of the Vietnam war and you know, it's, it, it goes back and forth from present time, the past and everything. Um, Flashbacks, I feel like, are being used in shows a lot lately. A lot of different shows are kind of using flashbacks. What do you think is so impactful about the flashback in a TV show? Flashback in, in a TV show yeah. or this TV show? I mean, um, both. But it, like, Because I'm sure your answer in general to a flashback could... But I mean, for this one, it's pretty special because we're kind of seeing the involvement of, you know, Sensei Kreese, which is important. So yeah, in this show, right. I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in this show, it's it, it's even more special. I mean, like mm -hmm. flashbacks are, are the, the thing about flashbacks is like whether it's in a film or whether it's in a television show. I mean, you may have, you know, a show that's out for a season or two. And next thing you know, you're getting flashbacks to, you know, these characters that you've only known for a couple years uh, to maybe it, it's it can tend to be kind of a lazy way of storytelling, you know, you know, to give you, you know, more of an idea of what's happening while cutting away to a timeline that doesn't even have anything to do with this one mm -hmm. with little like hints along the way. But this is something completely different yeah. because here you're, you know, you're building off of something that's been pushing, you know, for, for, how long has it been? 35 years since 35 the years. Yeah. Yeah. 35 years. So it's like, you have an opportunity now to fill in these gaps that people have been wondering about for so, so long. I mean, like everybody knew that Kreese was in the military in Vietnam for all these years. And for so long, people have been able to kind of fill in their minds all these gaps about what could have happened. But now here you are, you know, developing that, that canon. I mean, you have John, Josh and Hayden, I mean, solidifying it. That is a huge deal. I mean, that's a massive undertaking. Yeah. So for them to have the balls to do something like that, it just, it blows my mind. And I remember being on set and, and it was my first day and Marty was there and Jesse was there. And like, <laughs> I would have like one-on-one -on -one conversations with John, Josh and Hayden. And, 
and they would always say the same thing. They'd be like, big stuff, huh? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you're not making it any, any more comfortable. And they're like, yeah, this is a big deal, huh? I'm like, yeah, I know it's a big deal. <laughs> Just laying on the pressure. They were know. really laying it on. And like, even like crew members, like, the, like the boot, like the boom operator would come up and be like, so young crease. I'm like, yeah. He's like, it's a big responsibility, man. I'm like, <laughs> like it was so ingrained in the whole crew. It's part of the reason that was, it was so great to work on this show because like, Everybody there was passionate about it. Oh, absolutely. Like every yes. single person on yes. the street was just so happy to be there and so happy to be telling this story. And it was just, it, it really, it's like I said, it's been one of the best experiences of my life. Absolutely. And they just, really do. The, the, oh, yeah, the, the, the crew definitely, they, they yeah. really feel like they're part of this special, like they mm -hmm. geek out being on this show, like the people who are working on it, because they're fans, they grew up watching this stuff. So for them to be a part of it and like to even be part of these flashbacks, you're saying like, which I also believe totally enrich these stories, yes. right? You know, they, they completely enrich the stories. That they, they love it. I mean, there's just so much to, to, um, to appreciate. Absolutely. My question, though, Jesse, was about your character, you know, the, the bully, the varsity jock and everything. What was kind of the lowdown and whole situation with that character? I mean, they obviously, it was like maybe written in for you. Did you have a little bit of input in terms of like how he was going to speak, what he was going to look like? Like, what was that whole process like? Well, it was, it, it was interesting. Great question, dude. Um, yeah. they, they, you know, John and Josh and Hayden, they, they really wanted him to be, you know, um, you know, they, I had to think about the beginning part, which was very much like crease because they wanted to sell it as this was crease. So the way he says, like, you know, you don't show them mercy, Betsy or whatever, you know, <laughs> that I said, you know, you don't, he really wanted to embody the crease character. And then after that, and they reveal, you know, crease is actually the bus boy. Um, and, you know, there's a difference. There's then this character comes in and, you know, he's it, it deals with a lot of, you know, um, like young adult trauma that happens. You know, I'm talking about making fun of, you know, um, young Kreese's mom who committed suicide. And then, you know, the fact he's, you know, a little bit down and out. And, you know, it's, it's just like that hierarchy that I feel like a lot of kids in every generation deal with. And they kind of wanted they wanted to show that and see that, you know, Kreese is not really someone different. He's really just one of us you know he's one of he's he's just a regular person that's been dealing with his own personal issues and um you know i really wanted to unfortunately i really wanted to ingrain the uh you know the 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 bad guy who i was for those moments and and just really be i, I know i guess an ass like you know if we can say that on here um so even when i was doing it i remember like god this guy's such a jerk <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the point <laughs> yeah it's like, yeah, someone comes up to you like, yeah, Jesse, you played a real jerk in Cobra Kai. And you're like, thank you. Like, that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, guess I, don't know, I don't know how used you are to, to being a jerk, Jesse. I don't know how many douchebags you play, but I've I've played quite a few. And it, you, <laughs> always, you always end up asking yourself that question and saying, and reminding yourself, God, this, what could make this guy so mean? And you like you have to justify it. You, yeah. you just have to. I have interviewed people in the past on this show that have played some really horrible people on TV <laughs> shows and movies, and they are like the coolest, nicest people in real life. And they say it's such struggle because they'll be recognized, and people are like freaking out and just see that character they played on TV. Like it, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's you gotta admit, it's, it is fun playing like. It's fun <laughs> tapping into jumping into those shoes for a little bit. Oh, the the douchebag shoes? Yeah, or the oh, yeah. Dylan, <laughs> sure. you know. The douche shoes. No. The I, douche I shoes. hop into the douche shoes every once in a while. The I just see Barrett playing the meanest. The yeah, meanest. It's pretty fulfilling. Pretty fulfilling. Yeah, because you don't get to be that kind of guy in real life. And sometimes you want to be, you know? Sometimes yes. you want to be that guy, but you can't. And so you take it out in these roles. And uh that's it it works it works you use it you know but that's what i love so much about crease man i think that's why people resonate with crease so much is because he is that guy he speaks his mind he doesn't take any bs from anybody and if you want to fight him he's willing to fight you right there in the street like he's just you know he's that guy and it was so amazing for people to like kind of you know for people to finally see where that comes from and the, and the war wounds that it comes from and oh, then yeah. i mean not to give away anything but i mean pete episode 10 I mean, 
the, the the back and forth between what was going on in the past and the present. I mean, it was just. Oh, we had we had we had Nick Marini on who played Twig. We interviewed him a couple the episodes on already, oh, right. and he yeah, yeah, like episode ten. We were all talking about that, like <laughs> insanity yeah. for the Vietnam backstory craziness. Yeah, man, that was so fun. I I remember when because we you know the first episode was you know it takes place in the San Fernando Valley. And then come episode six, when we came around, I was just itching to, to see what they were going to do for Vietnam. And I show up, uh, and the first thing I see are those two choppers. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And then I walk around, and I see all the tents, and I see, like, the ammo boxes and the ammo crates and, like, all the palm trees that they had set up. I was like, damn, this is – no offense, but this is Cobra Kai? Like, I, love, I couldn't believe it because I, I, what I love about Cobra Kai is that it's literally an underdog in itself. And like, you know, that started on YouTube Red, you know, I and mean, we all, do, we all know the story, but for it to have come so far and for it to be taking such an undertaking as like establishing a history, you know, within this event that happened in Vietnam, in Vietnam was just such a huge thing for them. And it was just, it was so exciting. And like the, the energy was just palpable there. And um, yeah, it was yeah. Where shooting there was was just incredible, and I'm just so happy that the fans loved it, and and people get a real understanding of. That's uh, that's another thing that I keep seeing the fans say is like, I mean, I don't agree with Chris, but I get it, and like that's and that was the whole point. The whole point was to give people a different perspective of Chris, and we and they they pulled it off incredibly. Absolutely, so. no, it's it's amazing. But like we we knew, like. I, I knew as soon as they, they started showing like the, the backstory, as soon as the diner kind of came, right? Like there was kind of like, we see the diner and everything. They're setting everything up. We find out that it's Barrett. That's actually crease. I mean, like we're, we're kind of like, we're locked in for the ride. Like we want to know what's going to happen. Like it didn't take long for people to be like, Oh man, like, like the crease backstory, <laughs> let's go. Right. Like it, it kind yeah. of like that, that scene kind of pulled people in right away. Right guys. Right. Jesse, like it got people yeah, in right that, away. For sure. I love that. Which is dude, we were we were sucked in right away. I mean, yeah. not even a lot of people know, dude. The, that car that I drove is the original car from from the Karate Kid that Mr. Miyagi gives to Daniel. Which I was such a I had no idea that was going to happen. They, they threw that in as an Easter egg. Who knows what will happen with that? But that was an Easter egg they put in there, and they're like, yeah, we just we love it. Like let people figure it out. And that was a treat to even drive that because that's actually Ralph Macchio's car. He owns that car. That's amazing. Um, and uh you know and I, I love that they threw in your line where you say piece of junk out of scrap this <laughs> you know that that car is eventually going to go to the junkyard and mr miyagi is going to show up and be like who the hell threw this away and then he ends up taking it yeah my jacket will be in there from from, yes. from our fight scene <laughs> there's some blood, there's some yeah. blood for sure no, that was a huge sure. thing too pete was our fight scene that was such a massive part of the of the shoe of was like, you know, and it was super just, hot you said though like that jacket you said was <laughs> yeah it was so hot grouper that day oh he had a white t-shirt a thick old i don't know why they gave you such a thick flannel shirt and that thick letterman's jacket on top of it <laughs> Check him out. are you okay yeah. I'm, I'm just standing over the air conditioning unit blowing under my what, shirt just beating on his forehead it was man it was hot it was really really hot that day be honest how many times have you guys like watched like the season like like over, like have you guys watched it like more than oh, once? Yeah. Well, how many? How, how many times? I'm. From, I haven't watched it like from beginning to end. But, but like I've rewatch it, rewatches. How many times have you like went back? Oh, probably three, four times, probably. Yeah, I've watched the episode ten at least. Yeah, five times. I've had like five or six. Also, because I know you guys are part of it, but like the 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 house party like fight is insane. Oh. Oh my god, so good! And I oh can't wait for that tr that that soundtrack to get kind of put out because that song, oh, dude, I've been jamming to it all day. I gotta it get like, I, <laughs> dude, yeah, I need. Boy, I'm gonna go to the gym to that song like every day when the, when COVID's done, when all the gyms are open in Canada. I'm gonna go back. That's gonna be on like every, all the time. Like, that can't get you pumped up. I don't know what will. Yeah, I was running to Duel of the Snakes today. <laughs> Yes. And like Duel of the Snake, and I think the track is is uh, is uh, Live or Die. Man. Wait, is the soundtrack the track, out? Live or Die Man is such a sick track. Is the soundtrack out? Like I've been going yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Spotify. What? Okay. Yeah. 
Great. It's so come on, great. come on. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't, oh man, okay. Cause I've been just like going, I've been so going, good. well, I guess I'm helping Netflix too. Like I'm going back and like watching like my scene, like scenes on Netflix to listen to the songs. Cause I didn't know the soundtrack was out. Um, but uh, Barrett, Jesse, seriously, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on Pop Turnative. I really appreciate it, guys. Oh, it's our yeah. pleasure. Thank um, you so much. For having like, us. Jesse, you're already a two timer. I feel like when like I feel like you're getting into like that that prestige status sooner than later, man. Like I gotta get you a mug after. Like I usually get yeah, um, my guests a mug when they're like on for like three or four times. So you're getting close already. <laughs> like it's pretty crazy. Mug status. Yeah. Well, That's it's pretty luck. it's pretty quick. I mean, I think you're the record breaking. I mean, you've come on the show twice in like two weeks, which is pretty crazy. Well, we're trying to organize. We're trying to figure out that. That special moment where it's uh, it's uh, my dad, Barrett, and myself somewhere chatting up. We'll see. There will be a lot of energy in that room. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I love it. Barrett, where can people follow you on uh, social media to keep up to date with everything? Uh, I'm the most active on my Instagram, uh, Barrett Carnahan 210. Uh, I have a Twitter. I don't really use it all that much. Uh, ma- mainly Instagram, for mm-hmm. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And Jesse, if they forgot yeah. from watching our episode a week ago. It's uh, Twitter and Instagram at Jesse Cove. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty active on both. And, and Barrett and I are interacting with people about all this stuff at the same time. But Pete, I have a, before we go, I have a question for you, dude. Yes, sir. What do you want to see in season four? Because oh. it's it's coming, man. Uh, okay, I want to see if your character is related to Barnes. <laughs> uh, I hope so, man. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be nice. I just want to see like the tensions now between the three, like the three, the, tw- the three dojos. Like even though there's like an alliance between like Eagle Fang and Miyagi Do and everything, like I want there to be kind of this like competition and this these rough around the edges moments where Hawk yeah. wants to be the guy, but it's Miguel, and then there's other guys that kind of want to be involved with the fold. And like I, I just want to see like the dynamics and the growth between the three because we're we're prepping for the All Valley Tournament, baby. It's on. You know what I mean? I just got I just got chills thinking about that though. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. The the tension within those two, that's going to be sick. Like I'm sorry, but like I like the character of Hawk that Jacob Bertrand plays. Like dude, like one of my favorite characters not only on Cobra Kai, like one of my favorite TV show characters of all time, guys. I'm not even kidding you. Like I love the character of Hawk so much. Like the di- He's like, amazing. Like, it like the the growth of that character is superb. He's, He's hitting that smart. that scene of him running on the end of episode 10 like Oh, Crazy. Man. And the song in the background, to, 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 like the yes. things that build up, yes. <laughs> so yeah. good. Well, seriously, guys, congratulations! You guys did. Actually, I didn't ask. I didn't ask the the question I wanted to, to ask. Actually, Jesse, um, you brought it up a little bit. How did Barrett do playing your dad? Oh my god, I've, I've saying this. We've done a couple <laughs> interviews. I'm so happy. You know, I mean, from the because people ask me, why do you play your dad? Whatever, but like, it, it's like it, it 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 the cards fell the way they did and you know Barrett's such a great guy and from the moment I met him we were just it worked out and I was so happy and honored to play the character that I did and you know he did such a great job you know even uh you know Barrett's talked to my dad a few times as well and you know when we were on set as well and and we just had a great time and it was really it was very special I'm so thankful you know that I, I know how much care and passion Barrett has about this character we've talked about it you know um you know privately between us and and uh, even shooting ideas and stuff, but it's really, you know, he's, he's fantastic, man. I couldn't be happier. It's been, it's been a pleasure to get on this ride with him. Thanks man. Thanks. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. Chills. I got chills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a huge undertaking. So to, to have received uh, so much, uh, so much, so much love and care from, uh, from Jesse, like when it came to it, it was, it was, it was a big blessing to have Jesse along the way. So thanks man. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, it's a pleasure. Thank you guys so much. Seriously. Dude, thank you, you so man. much. No problem. Well, this has been Pop Turn. If youtube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes of Total Next Time, this is Barrett, Jesse, and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.